Hey guys, I'm Kale. And I'm Kayla. And this is Tale of Two Dead Girls. <laughs> Woo! Welcome to episode 19. I yeah. feel like we should have so many more episodes from like when this fucking podcast actually started, but there's only like 19. Oh my right. god. <laughs> but you know what? This podcast is just for fun, you know, and it's to, you know, keep everyone entertained when we put things out you know sometimes it's not right on time and that's okay because we got other things going on and this is for fun so thanks for nobody <laughs> for coming for our next yet for not being on time with our fucking episodes but um yeah I just wanted to say that <laughs> yeah yeah trust me we love you guys and we do have quite a bit of listeners and we don't want to like let anyone down but it's also, you know, as much as we love doing this, it's also important that we take time for ourselves, just like everybody else. Um, you know, Kayla and I have a lot going on in our personal lives, so sometimes yeah. we just don't have time to, like, you kind of don't realize going into a podcast, like, or just being a listener of a podcast, how much work actually goes into it. Like, it takes, It's a lot. <laughs> it's like hours and hours, and we love it, yeah. but sometimes it's just... I feel much. like there's just not enough hours in a day and there's not enough days in a week, you know? So no, for real. It's hard. Um, it usually but, takes me like four hours to prep for every episode. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. It, it, it'll it take me like a week to like do my story sometimes because yeah. I'm like <laughs> looking up other things and because I want to make sure I get, you know, as a oh my god, I can't talk <laughs> enough information as possible. But um, yeah. today's episode is going to be so cool. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm scared for it because this is a topic that I'm absolutely terrified of. And I am very <laughs> uh, confused as to why we're doing it. Um, because I'm terrified <laughs> of this and I hate talking about it, but we're doing it anyways. But um, it's the best. Get yeah, ready to get spooked. A lot of people really like this kind of topic and it's like I feel like it makes for a good like it makes for good content like this kind of topic, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. demons and shit. Oh, yeah. Hey demons, it's your boy. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Dude, have you ever watched this is a sidetrack, but have you ever watched uh -huh. BuzzFeed Unsolved? on YouTube yes I with have Shane and Ryan dude you yeah. remind me so much that would be us because well like not really it wouldn't it wouldn't really be us but like Shane is like a total non-believer and Ryan's always like scared shitless so like Shane's always like come get me demons and Ryan's like please shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah wait did you see the Annabelle episode <laughs> no but I watched uh I watched one that was like the Sally house oh my god I haven't seen that one I don't think yeah I mean, it's so it funny. wouldn't really be it's us because so we'd funny. both be like, we'd both be Ryan's for sure. Yeah. Like, I fucking get scared so easily. <laughs> and it's like, don't fuck, don't fucking tick off the demon. Please yeah. don't. Like, we'll both be that. But I, that Annabelle episode, um, he, I forget their names and who's who, but uh, wait, which one's a non-believer again? Um, Shane, he's like the tall, lengthy, white guy. Like, Yeah, yeah. So OG, he goes yeah. in to that museum, the, um, the Warren's museum. And then he sees the Annabelle doll and he's like taunting it because you know that if you like talk shit about the Annabelle doll in front of her, like she'll kill you or whatever, yeah. like, you'll die. And so he's like <laughs> taunting it and then like asking like, hey, are you going to kill me or whatever? And then like it like points to yes or does something, but like nothing happens to him. But then it's like the other guy has no idea that this dude is like saying all this shit in there. And he's like, you better be good in there and like don't conjure up anything you know but I, it's just it's, funny. it's like little do you know <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it go watch it it's like it's like funny and like spooky at the same time so yeah it's really um, cool i like it they're yeah they're awesome and remember from that last episode that we did i was like having like a panic attack while like doing the story yeah. i stopped watching ghost adventures after that and i I've been fine. So I feel like I really was just giving myself so much like spooky content like every single day, all hours of the day, where it was like really like eating at me. It's weird because I've never had that before, but I guess it is kind of true when people are like, if you bring in so much negativity, because I guess, you know, horror is kind of like negative like energy. Yeah. Like it's going well, to. True crime and stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, all of that. You definitely like, have to take a break sometimes. <laughs> yes. So now I'm a believer of taking a break of that because uh, it was really fucking with me. <laughs> and yeah. um, I'm a big horror fan. I love spooky stuff. I love to get scared. But yeah, I had to take a, a break and I've been okay. And so I was able to do this story and so uh <laughs> it's yeah. probably good that you took a break before this story since you're like oh, already yeah. terrified of this <laughs> oh yeah and it's also good well i think when when you record you're in somewhere that doesn't have windows right no i have two windows but they're like small and creepy too <laughs> Oh, well, because this is, like, the first time that we're recording during the day. For me, it's during the day still. It's, like, 6.30, so the sun yeah, is going down. Yeah, it's usually darker. Yeah, and so it's nice that there's still some daylight. Right. This. But I feel <laughs> like by happens, the time... Nothing bad happens in the daytime. <laughs> seriously, but I feel like as we tell the story, it's going to become nighttime, and I'm going to have to turn on my light. <laughs> All right. Well, we can get moving on it so we could try to avoid that. No, just yeah, kidding. let's do it. <laughs> Wait, before right. we do that, sorry. Uh -huh. I do want to just mention that I am moving. I am going back home. I'm going back home, you guys. I'm so excited. I lived in Orange County all my life and I've been away for three years. And yesterday I got a call and... um. I'm going to be moving back in about three weeks. So um, I feel like my mental health is going to skyrocket and be the best it's been in three years because uh, where I live now has been very like, um, like depressing for me. Like my mental health has like declined so much and um, I've, I'm the worst I've ever been, you know, uh, with like anxiety and depression and everything. But um I feel like it's gonna get better and I feel like I'm just I feel I'm just so happy you guys I'm just so fucking happy so happy <laughs> so happy I'm really excited for you that's Thank awesome you. I know you've been working really hard for that and like your all your commissions have been going towards that and like savings yeah, yeah. so you're doing great sweaty so. <laughs> I say that too oh my god I love it it's like I not even sweetie I just say sweaty I know <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh Okay, let's jump right into our spooky stories. Okie dokie. So I'm going first this week. And the topic that we're going to be talking about today is the exorcist. So this... <laughs> that's not the right song. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Wait, what is this one? I forget. Um, It's like, it's tubular bells, but I can never remember because I always get this one and the Halloween one mixed up. It's not like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's like that. <laughs> you know what? Just cut this part out and include the song, a clip of the song. <laughs> or I'll just include it and include the song. <laughs> You're going to embarrass us like that. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's my okay. boyfriend always <laughs> makes fun of me because I get this one and the Halloween one mixed up, but he's like, they're so different. And I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> but... Anyways, our story today is going to be behind uh, is going to be um, the true story behind the famous movie and one of the scariest movies of all time, The Exorcist. So I actually didn't know that that movie was based on a real story. So when I found what? that out, I thought it was <laughs> fucking insane. Yeah. Wait, you never knew? When did you find out? When you started the story? Yeah, well, I found out like uh, a few weeks ago and then I was like I should do that as a story topic <laughs> I cannot believe you never knew that it was based on a true story that's why I'm terrified of it like if it was just yeah. a movie I'd be like okay that's fine whatever but <laughs> oh my god that's, yeah, that's pretty crazy but same so the real person behind the story was actually a boy. Um, so in the movie, it's obviously a girl. It's Reagan. Um, but the boy, he's famously known as the Roland Doe. His true identity was never released or confirmed. Um, although some people say that his name is like Richard or Ronald. There's like a few different names that people think it is. But it's as far as I know, it's never been actually confirmed. But what's known of him is that he was an only child in a German Lutheran Christian family, and they lived in Maryland. He was a pretty average student who enjoyed comic books, listening to the radio, you know, just being a, a little boy. <laughs> he was like 12, but yeah. um, his best friend was his Aunt Harriet, and she was a spiritualist, and she was also a uh, Christian. 
Um, but she, being a spiritualist, you know, she liked using the Ouija board. Um, she would contact spirits. And when Roland became interested in it, she taught him how to use it. Ooh. So they're just... Uh, a grandma is teaching a grandchild. No, it's, it's his aunt. <laughs> oh, an aunt is teaching his her nephew how to play with demons that's not a good idea <laughs> yeah but if you think about it back then i mean like it wasn't as uh, right I think, like, yeah when did the ouija board come out anyways i don't know but uh i think it was the uh, 18 was in, like, hundreds okay yeah i think it was like more of a in this era it was like more of a toy so people were like oh this is cool and it's not dangerous <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Um, like a lot of things like smoking cigarettes <laughs> right <laughs> um so in 1948 when roland was 13 years old his aunt harriet died um he was extremely upset at the loss of his aunt because she was his best friend and honestly his only friend he had a hard time making friends um but in hopes to get back in contact with her he decided to use the ouija board that his aunt taught him how to use so after a short time of using the board uh it's reported that he began hearing small creaking crackly noises or strange cries around the family home the noises would become more violent and were followed by scratching noises in the walls and Ew. on the floors so just like loud ass freaking scratching <laughs> spooky um his father thought that the noises were coming from rats or rodents so he ended up tearing up floorboards took down the wall panels but was unable to find any evidence that there were rodents um the next set of events were objects being moved around or levitating uh, pictures would fly off of the walls and Roland claimed that his room would feel like it was violently shaking or vibrating and that his mattress and bed would shake. That's scary. Yeah. So like in the movie, how they have her bed shaking and stuff that that was like one of the things that he really felt a lot. So Roland's parents began to worry about Roland. So they ended up taking him to doctors and psychiatrists and they were unable to find anything wrong with him. So as a last resort, they decided to take him to their minister, who was Reverend Luther Schultz. One night, the Reverend decided to stay the night with Roland. Uh, they each slept in a twin bed in the same room, and the Reverend reported hearing vibrating sounds from Roland's bed, scratching sounds on the walls, and he witnessed an armchair in the room tip over while Roland was asleep. Ew. So the, yeah, so the Reverend was like, <laughs> yo, there is some scary shit going on in here. He's not making this up. <laughs> Yeah. So at this point, he advised the family to see a Catholic priest, Edward Hughes. So when he began the exorcism on Roland, uh, Roland began to act violently. Um, he was somehow able to slip his arm out of a restraint, rip a bedspring out of the mattress, and ended up slashing the priest's arm open. Fuck. With what, his nails? No, with the spring. Fingers? Oh, with the spring. Yeah, he pulled a spring out of the mattress and like used it to slash open the priest's arm. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Yeah, and then, so during the exorcism, scratches, bruises, bite marks, and carvings began to appear on Roland's skin. Ew. So, one of the carvings said, help me, the other one said, evil, and the third one said, Lewis. <gasps> so... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the family took the carving of Lewis as a sign to move to St. Louis, where they had family members living. And they hoped that they would be able to find better help there because they had more of a support system, I guess. Mm. Which, like, this doesn't really make sense to me because it's like, why would a demon carve that into somebody if they want you to get help? Like, why would a demon want him to get help? Right. <laughs> but, you know, it ended up working, so whatever. <laughs> okay, so this is when the family decided to move into the beautiful colonial style home known as... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, <that's Whoops>. <laughs> totally started reading a whole other sentence anyway okay. so this is when the family decided that they were going to move into the beautiful colonial style home which was on roanoke drive um this is the house that's now known as the exorcist house the exorcist house so <laughs> um yeah this house is still standing so and people live there yeah <laughs> So, shortly after the family moved in, the exorcism began. Over two months, Roland endured between 20 and 30 exorcisms by various priests. And it gets kind of muddy who performed which ones and when, uh, but the incidents are pretty much reported the same. So, basically, he would have scratches and bite marks appear on his body. The mattress would start shaking. 
objects like vases and pictures would just be thrown around the room. And eventually Roland began to speak in a deep guttural voice and started speaking Latin. Ew. So it was pretty clear that it wasn't his voice. I mean, he was a 13 year old boy. Like his voice was, would go extremely deep and guttural. Um, but he was so violent that it was reported that he even broke a priest's nose. Oh yeah. So, I heard that. Yeah. Wait, that's did also you one of the parts in the movie, but Oh, did you watch the movie while you were doing the the research on this too, just to like get a refresher at all or no? Um, I watched it so I've seen it before, but then I watched it after. Mm-hmm. Oh, you a- wait, um, you watched it after you did the research? Yeah, so I did all my research and then I watched the movie because I was like, huh, I want to see if it's like the same or if it's yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of differences, but there's also a lot of similarities, so it's kind of cool. I heard that the director of the film, he tried to like really, really, really like make the film as close to reality as it like was, like, you know? So Yeah, I think that like the events that took place were pretty similar, but the ending is totally different and like the whole, the beginning, like uh, where he goes and gets that artifact and stuff, like that never happened. That never <laughs> well, at least as far happened? as we know. <gasps> well, as far as we know at least. Because it doesn't say anything about that on any of the research that I did. Oh, but that little piece of like idol or whatever that he got, that's a real thing. Yeah. Like but that- I don't think it tied to the same yeah i i don't know the real story <laughs> who knows who actually knows <laughs> yeah i mean mm-hmm. the thing is is that this kid was like pretty much remained anonymous and mm-hmm. there's like you know so we don't know like a lot of the truth but we know a lot of it so mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> because the movie was based off of um the diaries from the priests that performed the exorcism oh. on him so they he the person william blatty who wrote the book mm-hmm wrote his book based off of the diaries that the priest had left behind spooky af yeah so anyways um (laughs) he broke a priest's nose (laughs) nose (laughs) um he reacted violently when he would see any religious artifacts or pictures and his parents were starting to worry about him because his health was really declining at this point um they finally took him to the alexian brothers hospital and this is where the final exorcism took place So one morning he woke up and he was having seizures. He shouted, Satan will always be with me. That was one of the last straws for the priests. I mean, they were sick of it. They're like, Satan, you need to get the fuck out of this guy. Yeah. (laughs) I wonder if, sorry, sorry, but (laughs) I I wonder if like during, you know what? I'm not even going to say this because if I'm saying I wonder, what if they're like, you know what? You wonder, well, we're going to show you. So you know what? Forget it. Forget I said anything. (laughs) No, I want to know what you're going to say. I don't want to say it. I'm scared. I don't want to say it. Okay, okay. Well, you're thinking it. <laughs> no, I'm not. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the bye-bye, man. Don't think it. Don't say it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Happy thoughts. Unicorns and rainbows. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that evening at 1045 p.m., the priest called upon St. Michael. So I didn't know who St. Michael was, but he is, this is just an excerpt that I got from Googling who is St. Michael. Um, <laughs> he's repeatedly depicted as the great captain, the leader of the heavenly hosts, and the warrior of helping the children of Israel. So just like a guy that is, you know, heavenly and yeah, he's like a warrior. <laughs> he's a um, warrior. <laughs> so the priest called upon St. Michael and seven minutes later, Roland came out of the trance completely and just said, he's gone. So mm. Roland later described that he had a vision of St. Michael defeating Satan on a battlefield. Wow. The strange behaviors immediately de- immediately ceased and the family was able to move back to Maryland. And although the true identity of Roland has never really been revealed... Uh, Many sources state that he went on to graduate high school, he got married, he had children, and people that know him claim that he has zero memory of what happened to him or what he went through. That's really weird. I'd be so scared, like, if... Oh, God. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk (laughs) about it at all. Like, I I always think about that, though. I always think about, like, if I got possessed, like, how the fuck do you go back to normal ever? Like, how do you ever sleep at night again? I feel like I'd be paranoid and scared. Like, that's how I feel with, like, haunted houses that had, like, demons or something in it. Like, watching those haunting shows and people are able to still live in that house, like, after things have, like, cleared up. But I'm just, like, I could, I feel like my brain would just be, like, fucking with me. 
after right. it was cleared up you know it's just uh-uh terrifying yeah no i'm the same way and like if somebody ever broke into my house like i don't i don't know how i would ever sleep again like yeah <laughs> you know just stuff like that i'm like damn to, to overcome this is crazy so he's lucky that he doesn't remember anything i mean i think that's the best outcome for sure if that's the truth yeah if it's the truth but yeah. I don't know. But even at the end of the movie, she says she has no memory of what happened. And then the priest is like, that's for the best, probably. Yeah. Damn. But, like, then she's looking back in the car window like she knows. Oh, God. I don't even want to think about this <laughs> fucking movie. Literally, it's, it's so movie. it's so scary. It's terrifying. I, I just, <laughs> I can't. Um, the movie The Exorcist was released on December 1973, and it has gone down in history as one of the scariest movies that were ever released. I think it um, is the scariest it is, movie. Yeah, like, no, the it's, it is like scariest movie of all time. It even it held up for its time because even watching it, like I was spooked. Like I had goosebumps, and yeah. some of the jump scares got me, but. The reason why it's like one of the scariest movies of all time is because basically like at that time that it was released, it was kind of around or after the satanic panic. And so everybody was already fucking freaked out about that. And it was yeah. like, it was like one of the only demonic movies of its time. It was like the, I think this was like the first one that this is what yeah. showed people what this kind of evil is. Like people wouldn't have yeah. known what possession and stuff like that is if it weren't for The Exorcist. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, were really religious back then, too, and just, like, seeing a little girl, you know, say cunt and, like, do crazy shit was, and, like, like, stabbing for her coochie-coo with a thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Her coochie-coo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah with like yeah it was just kind of like it was like shock value like if something like that were released in 2020 everyone would be like okay <laughs> but... yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> um... So the movie ended up being a huge box office success. Um, basically, when they were making the movie, Warner Brothers was like, this ain't going to do shit. Like, you have no famous actors or actresses. This movie's going to suck. Um, <laughs> but it ended up making around two and a half billion dollars. They were wrong. So, yeah. And it's gone down in history. I mean, shit. We still talking about it in 2020. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, what, um, 40 years later? Oh, no. Yeah. 30, 30 No, like seven. Well, no, yeah, because it was in 73. So, yeah, around, like, 30, 70, 40. I'm terrible at math. Wait, 70? No, wait. No, wait. No, no, no. You're right. It's, like, 50 years. No. 70s? 73? 83? 93? 03? 13? Oh, my God. It's been around for 50 years. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Let's see. I'm getting an exact math because I... Yeah, 47. You're right. 47. Yeah. Oh, That's my nuts. God. So fucking but... nuts. It ter so it terrified the audience to the point of fainting or vomiting, and the film was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, which won two of them, and the house on Roanoke Drive still stands, and many paranormal groups have investigated it, claiming to still sense a presence in the home. So, that's what I have on that. That's that on that. I want to add on to like that last part. Um, so when I was watching Ghost Adventures, and I think Kale, you watched this this episode too, right? The yeah, Exorcist I watched House. it while I was writing this. <laughs> yeah, so like, um, Zach and his uh, I forget which one of them goes with him, but they're like in the room. Aaron. Oh, it's always Aaron. Of course, it's Aaron. <laughs> Wait, no, Aaron or always Nick. gets... I feel like Aaron always gets screwed because he always has to go in alone. Oh, poor Aaron. I love him. But, yeah, I think it was Nick, actually. I think it was Zach and Nick because Aaron was in the house and he was watching. Oh. Oh. Anyways. Okay, well, yeah. Anyways, so, like, they were there and they weren't getting anything. Like, they weren't getting anything for, like, hours. And then they finally were like, okay, fuck this. We're going to bring in a Ouija board. And so they start playing with the Ouija board. Um, and I think it takes some time for it to start actually working. But um, they catch on the – was it the the spirit box or, like, the – whatever it was? Yeah, and it was, like, El Diablo – or something and like so it was like i don't know you know S spanish devil or something is there i don't know but um yeah it said like devil and then it said diablo yeah and it so said some were, crazy shit it they was were scary <laughs> yeah they were scared and they were like okay let's close this and they were scared <laughs> that was it but not it, it was weird though because like i feel like if this actually happened inside that house 
who the fuck in their right minds would want to live there? Not me, that's right. for sure. <laughs> Definitely well, not like me. I've never I've never like looked into it at all, but well, so in the in the episode, the lady that showed them where the house was, she was like related to the priest that yeah, like did the last exorcism and she wouldn't even go like near the house like yeah. she parked down the street and she oh, said she, d- like, she didn't even want to meet up with them near no, the house she, yeah she didn't she like was in her car and she was like all right it's right up the street i won't go any closer yeah <laughs> she's like i won't even look Which, back <laughs> yeah but um uh they were saying in the episode that like d- that like demonic energies or like entities can like stay in like the how like the i don't know how they described it but they were saying like the wood and brick can like absorb oh, it makes sense somehow and i've never like actually looked into that before yeah. but like that's what they were saying and i was like damn that's kind of interesting because it's like Spooky. you know they got like they did an exorcism on him but they you know you can't yeah. really like get rid of it fully in the house i guess like maybe they didn't try enough i don't know cuz like the family moved after that so maybe they just never went back (laughs) yeah very spooky shit man yeah it's cray cray um so since kale did the story behind the exorcist she did mention some of the stuff that i'm going to mention not much of it but um i wanted to share with you guys why the film is considered cursed um now i know that a curse is something that has to be put onto something or someone or some place. Um, like it can't just be cursed like out of nowhere. That's like what people <laughs> say, but like the fact that there's a lot of spooky coincidences and shit that happens, people call it cursed, you know? Um, so maybe it just had some, what is it called? Bad uh, mu- muju? Jojo, Mojo, Jojo? No, yeah. what is it? Mojo? Bad Juju. Ju- there you Juju. Go. <laughs> bad Juju. <laughs> it's just some bad vibes, bro. Yeah, so we'll just get into it. <laughs> so I'm going to just give you guys kind of like a list of things that happened um, that create this so-called cursed film. So there was a moment during production where one night their set caught or their sets caught on fire destroying what was supposed to be the McNeil's home and most of the other sets but the really creepy thing about that incident was that Reagan's room was pretty much untouched like everything else was pretty much destroyed besides that room and that room is you know Reagan which is the girl who was possessed that was her room Um, And so uh, the director, William Friedkin, blamed the incident on a pigeon that had found its way into the circuit boxes causing the fire. And then after this happened, they brought in a priest to bless the set. Yeah, that's that's fucking creepy. (laughs) I only read like briefly, like a little part of it, like one article, and I did not know that that her room was like untouched. That's so creepy. Yeah, it's pretty like because how is that going to happen you know so like it just some real spooky shit is happening there um but also during the film um ellen burston who played reagan's mom chris was hurt when reagan uh well during the scene where reagan slaps her across the room during one of those possession scenes and so chris was wearing a harness where they would like pull her so she so it looks like the slap was like making her fall down and during one of the um takes she you know fake slapped her and then they pulled the harness really like aggressively because they were like this is not good enough she needs to like actually fly so they they really like pulled it and she she like fell back and she hurt herself so in the scene you see her screaming and like her face and everything how she looks is not acting that was how she was actually feeling and that moment she was hurt she was screaming you know and all of that was just completely real and then till this day the uh, the injuries that she got from that still bother her damn well it made for good content (laughs) (laughs) yeah and you know they they did that a lot the director he really tried to like amp them up by like shooting a gun or something and like he would just like like he would really try to be like okay this needs to be a lot more like what can i do to make you you know 
perform more dra- um exaggeration like ex- dramatically yeah there you go <laughs> that that's what i heard about like the shining i don't remember the lady's name but she had the lady with like black hair like the main lady like the wife i can't remember her name in the movie or the actress i have not seen that movie i'll be honest with you you've never seen it okay i've seen I it. watched I just it when i was it like 13 but i thought it was really boring and i haven't watched it now that i'm like a horror fanatic you, you but... definitely have to for sure <laughs> yeah I loved Doctor Sleep. I will just say that Doctor Sleep was one of the best movies I have seen ever. Like it was so fucking good. You need to watch it. it. Okay, I'll do that. (laughs) It's like a it's like a sequel to The Shining. It's like what happened. It's like about the little boy as an as an adult. I didn't even know that they had that. Interesting. Yeah, but anyways, I heard the same thing about that actress that she was like tortured during the filming of the movie. I heard that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways <laughs> so while filming another one of the possession scenes um linda's back so linda um she is the actor of reagan so she plays reagan and so linda how old was she she was like what 10 years old i want to say she... 10 11 12 13 something like that she was yeah, young somewhere in that range between 10 and 13 for sure yeah and so in the scene where she's like She's like, she's sitting, she's like laying in bed and then she sits up and lays back down like aggressively and she's like back and forth, back and forth. Oh yeah, when she's like flopping back and forth like a fish. Yeah. That's like when the doctors walk in, they're like, she's doing so bad and they open the door and she's just fucking flailing back and forth. (laughs) It's like like, she's possessed, you dumbasses. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) The way that they look at her, they're like, what the fuck? (laughs) Oh God. Okay. So anyways, during that scene, she was injured. And um, there was so with to make that work, she was put in like some sort of equipment that she was laced into. And so the lacing became undone or like loose or whatever. And um, so it was it was pounding her in the back and she was screaming and crying because it was actually hurting her. But they thought she was, you know, just doing a good job at acting. But then they realized like, oh fuck, like she's actually like hurting, something's wrong. And then it ended up fracturing her lower spine and they didn't even take her to a doctor. Like they didn't let her see a doctor um or anything. I think she just kind of dealt with it and healed on her own. But um the scene that scene in the movie is that part, like that actual part that was like, you know, where she was like getting fucked up. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. So they used that actual take. I, you know, like, so when I'm watching this movie, I was thinking about it. I was like, okay, this movie's, like, pretty old, mm-hmm. but it has some, like, really, really good, like, scary parts. Like, you can't... When you watch old scary movies, sometimes it's, like, corny because it, yeah. you can tell that the technology wasn't advanced enough, but mm-hmm. that's insane. Mm-hmm. That she, like, I'm surprised, I'm not surprised that she was hurt, if that's yeah. the case. They used real, like real injuries and real you know bad things happening to them as or in the film so i can't ever talk i'm sorry i literally don't know how to put things into words it's fucking stupid um but anyways okay so many believed that the film itself was cursed and that playing it in theaters or just playing it anywhere was an invitation for a demonic possession billy graham who was a televangelist stated um there is power of evil in the film, in the fabric of the film itself. And so when The Exorcist was first released, it was actually banned in every Middle Eastern country besides Lebanon. Um, but then the re-release ended up being banned there. So it was banned in all of the Eastern Middle East or Eastern Middle East, <laughs> the Middle East. Damn. So during the, the Roman premiere, there was a ton of thunder and lightning. It was like pretty stormy outside. So it was kind of difficult for people to get to the theater. Like it was making it, well, not kind of, it was actually extremely difficult to get to the theater, but people got there. Many people inside the theater claimed to hear a horrific demonic crying sound coming from outside once the film started playing. And at one showing, a woman passed out due to fear and broke her jaw when she fell. She later sued the filmmakers, suggesting that subliminal messages caused the accident. What? That's so dumb. <laughs> like Kale said, there was people 
fainting, throwing up. They had to leave the theater because it was making them sick, you know. Um, but there was parts where people were like, oh, my God, did you see that? And they thought it was, like, a demon's face or something. Like, somewhere, like, you know, like, the subliminal. Yeah. There was, like, that flashing part of the demon's yeah, face. Yeah, but, like, other things. They're just like, oh, my God, did you see that? And um, Kind of thing, you know. But, yeah. Oh. So, um, also, there was an actual murderer that was in the film. But... I don't know what? if he was a murderer during that time of the film or if it was just after. So the guy's name was Paul Bateson. Um, he was one of like, I think he was part of like the medical crew uh, or the do- one of the doctors. I can't remember what exactly what part he played. But um, in September of 1977, the body of a variety reporter named Addison Verrill was found in his West Village apartment. And there was a caller that said he killed him. Um, um, the the person said that it was a crime of passion and that uh, he said that they had sex and did drugs until like the next morning. And then Paul hit Addison over the head with a pan and stabbed him in the chest. God damn. He was later convicted. And then um, he also, you know, confessed to the crime. So this was th- four years after the film was released. So... There were a few deaths uh, with this film. So there was Jack McGowan, who was playing the alcoholic director, Burke, Berkey, Burke, Birk, I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, Burke Dennings. And Vasiliki Malerios, who played Father Kara's, Kara's, Kara's? I can't remember. Do do you know how they pronounce it? Mm. I can't yeah, remember. I haven't seen it in so long. I can't even remember. But um, the mother and then both, uh, they both died while the film was in post production. And so the thing about that though is like in the film, their characters also died. So their characters died in the film, and then after the film was finished, they like died. You know. So when you say the mother, you're meaning the priest. The priest mother, mother yes. Like the old lady. Yes. That's in- okay. That's fucking crazy. Because, yeah. Like. Because she does die in the movie, but she also, like, the demon, like, in the movie uses her to, like, try to get at the priest. So that's really weird. But it's... she was old, too, so I don't know. <laughs> How did they right. die? <laughs> um, that, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I should have looked into that, but I didn't. But um, no, also, okay. a special effects expert that was there to help keep the set cool, he also died. And I don't know how he died, but he died. Um. Other deaths that occurred during the film were uh, Linda Blair's grandfather, um, and then again Linda's, who played Reagan, um, and then there was Lancaster Max von Sado's. Uh, his brother died on Max's first day of shooting, um, so we can only imagine how hard that must have been on him to start f- filming on the day of his brother's death, um, and then. Uh, during filming, Jason Miller, who played Father Damien, uh, Kara's, or Cart, whatever, <laughs> his son, um, was almost killed in a motorcycle. Or, no, was almost killed when a motorcycle hit him. But he didn't die. So, that's good. Um, but in 1987, uh, Mercedes McCambridge, who played the demonic voice of Pazuzu, I'm scared to say that. Is that even real? Fuck, I don't know. Um, Yeah, I heard you're not supposed to say a demon's name. Yeah, but then there's like (laughs) Zabil. Oh, fuck. What's his name? Beelzebub. Yeah, there you go. You're not supposed to say that too, but everybody does. (laughs) But anyway. I sang that Year Zero song by Ghost so many times now that if I was going to be possessed, I would be. (laughs) Already, yeah. Um, But yeah, Mercedes, uh, her son... Okay, it's kind of dark here, but it's very quick. Um, Her son murdered his wife and his children and then took his own life. So it was like a whole murder-suicide of that uh, her family. So she was kind of left without her son, her her wife, or her daughter-in-law and her grandkids. So um, That's sad. Yeah, that was uh, pretty shitty. But that's... uh, That is all I've got for it So that's interesting. I was... Cursed. Yeah. So the lady Mercedes, she played like the demonic voice, right? Mhm. So I read somewhere that she was actually possessed at one point in her life too. Oh my god, really? 
Yeah, and I didn't read, I only read one article, so don't fact check me, but, or I mean, fact check me, but don't quote me. (laughs) Right. Um, But yeah, I read in my, in that article that I read, it said that she, that what was scary about the demonic voice that she was making is that she learned from experience when she was also possessed. Ew. So why would she want, oh my God, oh my God, that's fucking scary. Yeah, so that, if that's true then that's really scary. Yeah. Well, I hope this uh, exorcist episode spooked you guys because um, I hope to never do this one again. Um, <laughs> we're probably, well, you know, possessions and stuff is very popular for all you spook fanatics. So uh, we may continue doing some more possession episodes because I definitely have a few up my sleeve, but I don't want to look into them. So Kayla, you might have to do it because I'm too scared. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. <laughs> or we can get a guest to tell any stories that we're too scared to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be fun. I like doing stuff like this, but it is hard to find. Like, I find that it is harder to find uh, paranormal stuff uh, versus, like, you know, true crime stuff. I mean, true crime stuff is obviously going to be easier, but I find it hard because I want to find something that's like genuine so it's i try to like i get too deep into it and then i get scared and i'm like okay i'm just gonna do something else (laughs) i feel you (laughs) because i do i get scared too so like it's crazy how we love doing this but we get scared so easily it's hilarious oh yeah for sure but i feel like that's totally normal also with this pandemic you guys please stay inside because if they cancel halloween or halloween horror nights i'm going to scream and i'm going to never post on this podcast again okay so oh, no. please just stay inside <laughs> that's a threat <laughs> <laughs> yeah so halloween yeah. horror nights is my favorite thing to do every single year i have to go and this i go to the one in hollywood because I live in California. Um, But yeah, please, we need to save Halloween. I would love to go to Halloween Horror Nights so much. I want to go so bad. We should go together. That'd be so much fun. Dude. And we can make a YouTube video and like post it on our YouTube for all of our like (laughs) podcast listeners. And I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of YouTube, we're going to be trying to upload our episodes to YouTube just in case somebody wants to use that to stream our episodes Um, yeah we did get an email or a few of them of people asking about it and this was like a long ass time ago and we tried i was really trying to with michaela but uh we weren't able to get them up um but kale says she got good internet so hopefully she does oh also i am moving though and where i'm moving to i i think the internet's pretty good at my brother's oh my god yes (laughs) so i might be able to try and then if it doesn't work out we can wait we can wait and see then too because we do have 19 episodes to upload so just remember that so be patient with us please (laughs) yes Okay, well, thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget, if you have any spooky stories, any sleep paralysis stories, um, any any just spooky nightmares that you have, they don't even have to be real. Like, if you have, like, a nightmare and, I mean, like, give us, like, a real story, you know, like, your own nightmares. Don't, like, make something up, you know, but... um anything at all please email it uh, email it to us tale of two dead girls at gmail.com we'd love to hear from you guys we are putting out a morbid mini very soon so watch out for that listen to it see if your story has been told please send us your stories it's scary we like to get scared we like to share your stuff <laughs> yeah all right guys well that wraps up our episode 19 and we will talk to you guys in episode 20. And we'll We'll meet meet you you six six feet feet under. under. Whoop whoop, 20. (laughs) I don't know what to say. (laughs) Your little, like, after comments are just so funny. I'm just gonna repeat you, but, like, also throw in a little song. (laughs)